Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Sarah. I'm sorry that it's been so long since I've posted a video. I've just been kind of busy, went through a long period of transition, but alas, here I am, and I am going to be doing a review on the new Huda Beauty uh, Faux Filter Foundation. I um, purchased the shade Angel Food number 110. Um, bought this off the website. Went on to the hudabeauty.com to see what shade um, it recommended. So this is what the site looks like. And you can kind of scroll through and kind of get an idea. It said that shade 110 was um, equivalent to Kat Von D Locket in light 41 neutral. Um, I do own that. Um, it's a little bit too pale for me actually, but I make it work. But I haven't swatched this. I only took it out of the box just to see what the bottle looked like. So this is what it looks like. Clear plastic. Lid comes off and we have a pump. But I haven't swatched this or anything. So I'm super excited to see if it matches. Um, I'm going to be prepping my skin today with my little sample of No Problem. Um, I got this at work, aka Sephora. So I'm going to be priming my whole face with this. And then on one half, I'm going to use a MAC 170 brush, and the other half, I'm going to use a damp um, Beauty Blender Pro. So we'll see which side applies nicer. And then um, if I need it, I brought my Tarte Shape Tape, but I do believe that I should be able to use this uh, foundation under my eyes as well. So without further ado, let's get started. And I'm still wearing these little press-ons by Kiss. The ones I have on now are like green and gold. $7.99 at my local Target here. And the no problem is really just going to go kind of in areas of concern. Not like on my entire face. Because that's what skincare is for. Alright, skin is prepped. So we're just going to give this a good shake. And then I'm going to prime this pump until it comes out. Alright, here we go. Alright, so it's a little bit more than one pump on my palette, aka my Bath & Body Works Candle Lid, which makes the best palette ever. So I'm going to start by doing, I guess since I grabbed it with my right hand, and I'm right handed, I'm just going to do the right half of my face with the 170. So, picking up just a little bit. Oh gosh, yeah, that perfume scent of it. I can definitely see why people are commenting on it in the other videos, but it's kind of nice. I'm not bothered by it. And I like the way it's blending in. I don't have any other mirror to get up close for anything. I'm really liking the color. I'm glad I didn't go with the lightest shade. Um, her little shade finder thing said the lightest shade is equivalent to Fenty 100, which I did purchase and is way too light for me. But this is reminding me a lot of NC10 from MAC and their Studio Fix Fluid. Because even though I'm really pale, I'm not pink. I'm either neutral or a little bit more golden. So it's really, really tough to find foundations that match my pale skin that don't turn me orange. I like the smell of this foundation. I think other people might be more sensitive to smell. I like it. And this is it also brought under the eye. Color wise, I'm very, very pleased with how it goes. Um, with my skin. I love the color, the undertone. I'm really glad I got shade 110. That's Angel Food. And I think it's cute that she named it after food. Alright, so on the other side, the left side, I'm going to take my damp beauty blender and start stippling it in. And I know that a damp beauty blender can sheer stuff out, but I just wanted to see does one side give a better, you know, like one tool give a better result versus the other. And normally when I try a new foundation, I'll just go on my entire face with one tool. 
Today I actually remember to try both and see which one I like better. I like that it doesn't dry super quick like Fenty does. Because that's been an issue that I've had with that foundation. And that it dries so quick, it's really like you have to do small sections. Um, so first impressions of this, I like the coverage. I think it's quite equivalent um, to Studio Fix Fluid from MAC. I don't think that it's like the most full coverage thing ever. But I also didn't go with an excessive amount. I did what it kind of recommended, like one pump. Um, I probably got out about a pump and a half, but this is what I have remaining, just a little bit left. So like for areas on my chin where some of my, um, you know, acne scarring or whatever you want to call it is still kind of coming through, a little bit of that redness of healing blemishes still, I'm just going to go over that a little bit more with some excess on the Beauty Blender. But I like that it doesn't feel heavy on my skin. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything really. And kudos, Huda. You came out with 30 shades and you even managed to make one that was also light enough for me, but even one that would have ended up being too light. Lovely. So now I'm going to see how Tarte Shape Tape um, gets along with the Faux Filter Foundation from Huda. So I'm using the shade Fair. And I'm going to put this um, in my eye area and I'm going to blend it out on both sides with my damp beauty blender. And it doesn't take a lot of this product so if you've never tried shape tape and you're like seeing these other YouTubers, beauty gurus that are using a lot of it, you're just going to go through it faster. I don't think it's necessary to like really load it on. And I'm also really intrigued um, by this foundation um, tonight, too, to see if it is going to set on its own um, and do okay with no powder or if I will need to do any kind of powdering. But what a difference, huh? What a little concealer does. And if you are wanting to try something like Shape Tape, but maybe you can't get your hands on it, or it's always sold out, or you don't live near an Ulta, but you live near a Sephora, um, the best equivalent to it, or dupe, if you will, um, not for like, you know, cheaper price or anything, but Kat Von D's Locket Concealer is a very full coverage, um, similar texture. It's setting pretty nice. So far, I have no complaints. And the perfume scent of the foundation is quite floral. It's not bad. I think people are just so used to either no scents or things that maybe smell like a little bit like eucalyptus or something because of the, like, you know, cover girl clean makeup that they used when they were, you know, little teeny boppers. And hopefully this foundation will eventually make it into Sephora's because currently um, it's on Sephora.com only. And I know that makes it really difficult when you're trying to shade match and you're just not sure. But if you already know what color you wear across other brands, you can make a better guess. And you know, if you buy something off the dot com and you're like, oh, that was kind of a mistake, you just bring it to your local store and return it. It's not like you have to mail it back and wait. But I can say with a lot of confidence that I'm going to keep this one. And yay for being 32 and having this eye shape and always creasing. Doesn't matter what I do. I like it. I like it. I can say with confidence right away that I'm enjoying it a lot. I like the way it sits on my skin. I am combo um, normal to oily, but my skin is still dehydrated, so I have to use some pretty intensive um, moisturizers um, during the day in order to keep it from getting super greasy. So, um, in case you're wondering what my skin is like, I know that they say, you know, if you're dry to normal or just like ever so slightly oily, you shouldn't have to powder this foundation, um, and that if you are pretty oily, that they recommend powdering. Um, I'm going to try wearing it without, especially as we're in November and Minnesota now and things are getting drier and drier. Um, and what I thought I would do for you guys as well is kind of do a little, little swatch fest here. 
So the first thing I am going to swatch on the back of my hand is the Huda Foundation in 110. So you can see what that looks like. And then I'm just going to go down the line. So now I have on Kat Von D Lock It Foundation in Light 41 Neutral. So I'm going to pump out a little bit of that. It's almost kind of gray on me. It's almost too light. And I used to use this as my adjuster. And you know, I would um, disagree though that I see them next to each other. That Huda is like the 41. The 110 is like 41. It's not. It's significantly more golden. But I can appreciate that. Um, the next one is the Fenty Foundation um, in the shade 100. So I'm going to give this a shake. I have a lot of light shades here. So we're gonna get them all swatched next to each other. Yeah, see even Fenty 100 is a little bit closer to the shade 110 by Huda, it's a little touch lighter. But 110 has, you know, appeared to be a really perfect shade for me. Um, the next one that I have in the lightest is the shade 0 0.5 in the All Nighter Foundation by Urban Decay. Um, in their Naked Skin range, I actually go with 1.0 because it's a bit more golden. Their 0 0.5 is pink, and I don't want to be pink. And the thing, too, so that's the 0 0.5 um, All Nighter from Urban Decay. The thing about that one is that it will oxidize um, darker, so I don't wear it by itself too frequently um, unless I want to look tan. Once Upon a Time from Born This Way... Snow was the lightest color. I cannot wear this one by itself, and I have to find something to mix with it because it's water-based, and I can't mix my silicone-based foundations with it. They do not want to hang out. They start, they start to separate. And it's pretty astonishing, too, that Snow here was considered a really light shade because when we compare it to these other ones it's very very deep this is like an NC10 or an NC20 and then kind of my my holy grail foundation because it does what I need and nothing more um, is Studio Fix Fluid by MAC in the shade NC10 so that's kind of like one of my go-to's we're gonna swatch that one vertically instead of horizontally because I'm running out of room so there is NC10 from MAC in the Studio Fix Fluid line. And then the final one is um, the Empowered Hybrid Gel Foundation in the shade Porcelain. This is from Tarte. So it comes in this nice frosted glass jar. And I really love this foundation. It is incredibly beautiful. So I put a dent in it. You get one ounce, but such a little bit goes a really long way. So that's going to go in a vertical line next to the studio fix and that stuff right here that matches me really well too so you know it's a journey trying to find the light foundations that actually look good on the skin and sit nicely on the skin I'm sure if I was um, significantly more oily I would really really love all-nighter or I would really love the locket foundation from Kat Von D they simply just don't jive well on my skin by themselves I love the way Too Faced looks on my skin other than the color so if they could just get something that would go for, you know, NCs and NW10s, like really truly light enough. Because even when I looked at their newest shades at work, they don't look like they're still going to suit really pale skin without having a line. Now as I'm looking at this, there is no line. I'm really loving the finish of this foundation. I think it looks quite natural. I have nothing to complain about. Not a thing. Um, so with that being said, I am going to go finish the rest of my face here because all I started out with was brows um, and I will come back and let you know how the rest of the products went over top. Alright, I'm back with the rest of my makeup on. Just something simple. I'm going to be going out for dinner tonight so I didn't want to do anything like really crazy. It's just casual dinner with my mom. Um, but to kind of like let you know what I used to finish off, I used the Bye Bye Pores Pressed Setting Powder from It Cosmetics. This is what it looks like. Just a nice translucent pressed powder. I did it just to set um, my lid and my under eye for the concealer because it was creasing on me. I don't care who says it's anti-crease on me. It creases. If it doesn't crease, then I need to know what the witchcraft is. Um, and then I used um, a blush from Makeup Geek. And so that is this guy right here. It's called Heartthrob. 
So that was the blush I used. And then I also used one of her highlighters in Midnight Sun. So this is the color. Really beautiful. I really love the sheen that it gives. Um, for lashes today, I used Perversion from Urban Decay. One of my favorites. I've been using this on my channel for a hot minute. Um, it's either that or Tarte. Uh, lights camera lashes um for my lip color i am wearing soccer mom by makeup geek this is a plush matte so it's like a lip cream so it just goes on nice and soft really comfortable to wear and then to finish everything um i just gave myself a light mist of mist and fix by makeup forever hands down my absolute most favorite setting spray it melts the powders back in has hyaluronic acid to give my skin a little bit more moisture throughout the day and um, it really does lock my makeup in place. Um, I had happy tears one day and I was like, oh shit, my makeup is going to be ruined. But alas, when I tapped away the tears, nothing had moved. So um, to sum up my thoughts and feelings on the Huda Faux Filter Foundation, I like it. I like the way it's sitting on my skin. I like the fact that I didn't have to powder my face. And when I wanted to blend products over it, Everything got along very well. I like when things play nice together so that I don't have to do so much work. So this in the morning, if I'm not talking to anyone, is like five, ten minute max kind of face. Um, and I like the coverage. I like the way it feels. It looks, it looks like skin. I appreciate the way it sets that I don't have to powder it because then it will just look nicer the longer I wear it instead of getting cakey. Um, so that is the end of my first impression slash review of the Huda Faux Filter Foundation. Um, if you have any questions or comments or requests for future videos, please leave those down below in the comment section. And um, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!